welcome to the SDG Media Zone. We're going live with, uh, on, on the web TV, we're going live on Facebook. Please join the discussion online with hashtag SDG Live. Um, today's discussion on this panel is on Uniting for Climate Action. So the Uniting for Climate Action campaign was launched um, as a global partnership between the World Bank, uh, the Fijian Presidency, the German Ministry, as well as the Italian Ministry, and a number of other partners. It's really a campaign to emphasize the unity in the lead up to COP23 and through COP23 on towards Paris and beyond. Um, as part of the campaign, we're looking into uh, the urgency and the accelerated need for climate action and finance. Um, and we're very honored to have these distinguished panelists on the panel today. So today with me, we've got uh, Minister Inia Seratu. <laughs> He's the Fijian Minister for Agriculture, Rural and Maritime Development, as well as National Disaster Management. Welcome and thank you for being with us. Thank you. He's also the high-level champion to the UNFCC uh, COP23 uh, meetings later this year. Um, next time we've got uh, Mrs. Ingrid Hoven, who's Germany's Director General for Global Issues um, for, for the Ministry of Development Corporation. Thank you for joining us. And next along we've got uh, Mr. Frances Francesco La Camera. Uh, he's Italy's Director General for Sustainable Development, Energy and Climate in the Ministry uh, for Environment, Land and Sea. Thank you for joining us. So just to get the scene started, we're going to play a short video which is the trailer of the Uniting for Climate Action campaign. It's, uh, it, it highlights the unity that we're seeking, um, and it really emphasizes that climate action is taking place at multiple levels, not only at the state level, but at the city level, at the business level, at the individual level. And it is becoming one of our generation's greatest uh, challenges and one of our generation's calls to action. So if we could play that video, that would be great. <laughs> We have reached the tipping point, and this means we must come together. How do we scale? By many individuals doing a little bit. Doesn't matter your age, where you come from. You have the power to take action that bring land, sea, and people together. Stories remind us of who we are. Fiji is not the only country affected. It is a global concern. Each of you is rising to the challenge, and you're lifting each other up, going faster, further, together. We need to work together. Thank you. So uh, let's get started with the minister. Minister, you are the high-level climate champion for COP23. Um, as you're structuring the climate action program, going into the COP, um, you're framing it around this concept uh, uh, of, under the slogan, Uniting for Climate Action, going faster, further together. What exactly does that mean to you? Thank you. Let me just first uh, acknowledge the UN and, uh, of course, the World Bank for bringing us uh, again together this morning. And, of course, I acknowledge my friends from Germany and Italy as well. I've just heard myself in that video saying that uh, Fiji is not the only country affected and it is a global concern. Uh, again, let me iterate the fact that we are all vulnerable and we must all act. That's very, very critical. In uniting for climate action, we must understand the fact that first, we are all vulnerable, and we must all act. We all have to take responsibility. As the global champion for COP23, uh, it is one of our responsibilities, together with my co-champion, uh, Madam Elaiti of Morocco, to enhance partnerships partnerships between parties, meaning governments, and of course we, all have, we also have regions, we have states, we have towns and cities, we have uh, communities, we have the civil society, non-government organizations, faith-based organizations, and of course individuals. We all have responsibilities. Parties have uh, uh, agreed to the Paris Agreement, but the implementation is not only for the parties. It is the responsibility of governments, it is the equal responsibility of regions and um, towns and cities, communities, so we should all unite for this. And uh, as I've stated, it's not only a concern of a small island state, 
whether we are big emitters or whether we are small emitters, whether we are a rich country or we are a least developed, developing country, we all have to take responsibility and unite uh, in this. So to achieve this, we need to find and share ways to promote the practices, share the information and technology, and most importantly, financing as well, uh, because uh, we all have different needs. The Paris Agreement acknowledges that, and we have uh, to uh, ensure that uh, to achieve uh, what I would preferably say as net zero emission, carbon emission, we all have to take this equal responsibility and therefore we should all unite and act together for the good of mankind and of course for sustainable development in the long term. Thank you. Thank you, absolutely. And, and I just wanted to quickly pick on, on the vulnerability component. So Fiji is, is the first small island state to, to preside over a, a climate conference. Um, what is your aims and uh, ambitions coming out of the conference in terms of dealing with vulnerability, building resilience, and enhancing uh, adaptive capabilities of, of the most vulnerable regions and countries in the world? Thank you. Uh, again, Fiji is from the South Pacific and we are amongst the most vulnerable and we are amongst the worst affected when it comes to uh, disasters and of course climate induced uh, disasters as well. I've talked about uh, the, the, the varying needs uh, within the different countries uh, and of course uh, for, for Fiji and for the Pacific this is not just a matter of sustainable development but it's a matter of survival as well. And for us, it's very, very critical, very, very critical, I'll say again, uh, to build resilience uh, so that we can uh, achieve sustainable development in the long term. For us to, to build resilience, uh, there are various approaches that need to be undertaken. Uh, one is, of course, uh, building the capacity, capacity within government and capacity within the various institutions and agencies, and, of course, capacities within uh, the local communities and individuals in Fiji. Uh, that's very, very critical. Uh, I've talked about the financing component because uh, we've always talked about this. Of course, uh, we are low emitters, but uh, of course, we are also, uh, through our NDCs, contributing uh, towards uh, mitigation. Because for us, more mitigation now means lesser adaptation in the future. But again, we keep insisting that we have to equally uh, look at uh, or balance between adaptation and mitigation because for us as a small island state uh, mitigation is uh, is critical it's important because it's a matter of survival it's a matter of survival and therefore for us to have resilience in the future we have to have a balance between adaptation and mitigation as well this is where financing is so important this is where insurance uh, becomes so important uh, for us as well and I've talked about this uh, resilience for us. Again, uh, there's a lot that we can influence pre-disasters. That is why investment in disaster risk reduction is so important. But then small economies with very limited resources. Uh, but these investments, uh, these are investments for us. It's not only expenses, it's investments. And secondly, uh, we can look at post-disasters as well. Uh, for Fiji particularly, after Winston, we are building back better, the principles of building back better. We are building back stronger, because as we build back better and stronger, that means a resilient economy, resilient community, and of course, we should be able to contribute towards SDG in terms of achieving sustainable development goals. Thank you. And it, it, it's really that underlying message that we need to go further and faster, and we need to do it together. So, so maybe over to you, um, Mrs. Hoven. Um, the, the climate conference is being hosted in, in Germany, in Bonn. So maybe just from a German perspective, what does Uniting for Climate Action mean to you? Yeah, thank you. I think first, um, Uniting for Climate Action provides us with a unique platform really to, to reach a global audience, and this is very necessary at a specific um, time. Um, and especially as Connecting for Climate has placed the focus on providing dialogue for, on the nexus between development and, and climate. What we have just seen the last couple of weeks, hurricanes, like Irma and Maria have had devastating effects in, in the Caribbean countries. Um, and we know by 
um, by the analysis that the World Bank has undertaken that by 2030 we run the risk that 100 million people are going to fall back into poverty if we don't change course. Um, so I think what United for Climate could do, because in COP under the Fijian presidency, we are going to discuss our common future. This is what COP23 is about. And this means it's the future of our kids, it's the future of our young generation. And United for Climate can provide this type of voice for, for the youth so that they can be present at a very important um, juncture in time when it comes to, um, I mean, when it comes to a point where we have to um, be faster in implementing the, the climate um, agreement that we have concluded in Paris. So I think this uh, United for Climate really can um, bring the youth into the conference rooms, the youth into the scene, and increase the pressure on the decision makers to be ambitious in faster uh, implementing the Paris Agreement. And, and maybe just to follow up on, on Germany's perspective, what, what are your uh, priorities going into and, and coming out of the, the climate conference? Well, first, of course, I would like to underline, um, as um, Minister von Fitchi has said, we have to make sure that, that we stick also to our financial commitments. Additional resources are needed to give developing countries a hand to implement the Paris Agreement, either on the mitigation side, but also on the adaptation side. So certainly Germany has made a commitment to double our climate finance uh, by 2020 to 4 billion euros for each year. And this provides us the opportunity really to increase our programs on urbanization, on resilience, on renewable energy, on forest protection. We have two main, I would say, deliverables, but a focus for COP23 is first, that we would like to further showcase the progress made under the so-called NDC partnership, and we, to, to, we are going to do this together with Fiji. The partnership is about implementing the Paris Agreement, giving developing countries a hand to really put commitments into practice, put commitments into sector policies, and make sure that on the ground change happens, that the big transformation that is needed can really um, be, be a reality. So this is the NDC partnership, and out of now we count with 71 members. And we are going to, to give a hand to Fiji to provide also um, um, a, a specific support to the Pacific Island states. The second deliverable is on resilience. As the minister has said, we have seen the devastating effects of extreme weather events. We have to invest more in resilience and adaptation to climate change. And additionally, we have to figure out whether new financial tools, such as climate risk insurance schemes, could give us an additional cushion to maintain the livelihoods of many affected people. And this is the second focus for COP23. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and just, just to also narrow a little bit down on, on the partnership and the resilience building, a lot of those implementing activities actually happen at a non-state level. So, so what's your message for, for cities and businesses um, who are also uniting around the climate action agenda? But the big message should be that each of us, uh, each individual, no matter where, where we come from, what kind of background we have, a cultural background or a religious background, that all we can make a difference if we really join efforts. And the same is true for subnational governments, the same is true for cities. And what we see and what we observe, that we see actually growing interest because people have understood that unless we act together decisively on climate action, that, as has been said, um, the cost will be high of action in, in the future. We are going to lose the development gains of the past and the possible development gains of the future. And um, I think it's idea that the Fitchin presidency bring this new concept of inclusiveness to the conference, which would give us a chance really to mobilize all these different stakeholders and to make the COP23 really a place where people feel that they can make a difference. And United for Climate, portraying the right messages could give us a good hand in this respect. Absolutely, perfect. And over to you, Mr. La Camera. Um, the, Italy was a host of the G7 this year, and especially around the, the G7 environment and the All for the Green campaign, um, there was a strong showcase of, of unity and, and, and a real uh, ambitious call for more 
uh, financing and more action uh, towards environmental and climate issues. So from an Italian perspective, what, what does Uniting for Climate Action mean to you? Uh, recalling the G7 uh, uh, environment, uh, uh, first of all, I would say that it was coming really in a very difficult period. You know, just one week before the G7 uh, environment, uh, Mr. Trump announced the intention uh, to leave the Paris Agreement. Uh, just uh, a few days before the French election, and the election in the uh, in, uh, UK. And uh, we have also the perspective of the election that will take place in Germany in, uh, now in the, in the in next weekend. So it was not easy uh, to, to, to realize what could be the output of the meeting. And also, uh, I think that the campaign that uh, all, uh, uh, all for Green uh, uh, made possible as a, uh, every corner of Bologna was speaking, was talking, was expressing something concerning the G7 environment. Uh, England has, has said perfectly that sometime uh, in our meeting the ministers are in room where there, there are not windows. The Sherpa stay in more darker room preparing the meeting. So sometimes you feel that you are uh, living a, a, your own reality. Uh, putting all this in the context of Bologna where all including the ministers, could feel that uh, everyone was working, was expecting, was looking for them to take some decision, make, a, make possible, I think, a very good result. That meeting came with the first time uh, an environmental minister could talk also about economy, about uh, fin sustainable finance, uh, and the result was, uh, was really great, uh, I think. And this was also possible because everyone, uh, at least at hand, in the different rooms could feel that there was someone behind expecting something. something. Exactly, and so this is actually really an exciting time. There's a strong call for climate action and businesses, individuals, communities, uh, cities are all uh, showing leadership in that. So what are your hopes and aspirations for the, for the climate conference and, and, and what are your aims uh, looking forward? Uh, we have to understand one thing when we talk about these conferences, that uh, everything will be decided, everything will be discussed. It will not impact us in the short period. This gives uh, uh, the sense of the importance of uh, making people understand the sense, the magnitude of this, what is at stake, and uh, uh, give possible feel that uh, it's not like the usual political thing. When you take a measure, and the day after, you can measure what they have done. Now we are working for the medium and long term. So every sacrifice we do, every financial engagement, will not give you the result tomorrow. So the people has to be convinced, has to be participating in the decision-making process, because it's something that we are looking forward, possibly for our children, if we have some, or for the next generation anyway. So uh, we must be convinced there must be a moral and ethical attitude that has to be built. Okay. No, thank you very much. Uh, we're running a bit out of time, so <clears throat> I'd like to <clears throat> ask you to give a, a quick shout out, a, a, a short conclusion, especially in light of our online audience, which is a younger audience. So what is your message for, for the younger people out there? I'll start with you, Minister. Thank you. Uh, again, as we are preparing for COP23, uh, again, I wish to I uh, acknowledge uh, all parties for uh, having confidence in Fiji to preside over COP23. Uh, we are focusing on, uh, on uh, two major aspects. Uh, uh, on the political front, uh, it's the preparation. We are focusing on the preparation of the implementation guidelines uh, and, of course, uh, the drafting of the, of the um, uh, facilitative dialogue engagements as well. Uh, but I wish to encourage uh, our youths, particularly in the climate action agenda. Uh, this is one of the cross-cutting issues for us, uh, gender, youth, health, education, and resilience. Uh, we have uh, various programs uh, which we hope will uh, uh, entice our youths to, uh, to play a, a leading role. Uh, often we see uh, gender issues, particularly women and youths, as victims uh, of disasters and uh, 
uh, climate change uh, and catastrophes, but we want to have them as uh, agents of change, uh, as, uh, as uh, uh, key stakeholders. They have to take responsibility because this is not only about today, it's about them and the future in terms of sustainable development. And we urge all our youths uh, to, again, uh, plead with their leaders, and of course, not only pleading with their leaders, but take responsibility, be involved, and of course, uh, uh, contribute towards the implementation of the Paris Agreement for the good of humanity. Perfect. Thank you. And very, over to you, Ms. Owen. I, I would say to our youth audience, um, this is about your future. Make your voices heard. It's your choice how the future could look like. And change is doable um, if we join forces. We have seen this. Transformation is doable. We are not yet at the speed that we need. We are not yet at the level of ambition that we need, by far not. But if you push us further, decision makers, uh, the private sector, um, then I think we can get to a place where really we can secure the livelihoods of, of many, many people and a better place for you in the future. Thank you. And you, Mr. Lekama? I would say that uh, this generation had something that we didn't have. So they have uh, a tremendous capacity to enter in contact with the others. This is very, very, very good. So this is a way they can also be behind the government pushing them. But it's also, uh, there's also asking you not to stay in the surface. So sometimes you have to close your smartphone, you have to close your Facebook, your Skype, and read papers, going deep in the problem. This is the best way to stay close to your government and push them forward. Absolutely. So educate yourself, be part of the solution, and, and join us in Uniting for Climate Action. Thank you so very much to the panel, and thank you to the audience. Uh, keep on following us live on S, uh, with the hashtag SDG Live. Um, we're coming to you from the UN General Assembly, um, from the SDG Media Zone. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.